So welcome to this second video of today's lecture. And now we're going to focus on some uh, interesting strategies that you can use to develop your theoretical contributions. And I think there are at least three strategies that you can use. Uh, again, I'll try not to be too normative or maybe I am being normative by giving you this kind of instructions on building a theoretical contribution, but still feel free to develop your argument in another way. These are three examples, but there are more. So I will start with one that comes from quantitative research. And I think this can be used in your quant part of your study, which uh, discusses the hypothesis testing, like the conclusion from testing your hypothesis and how that, that leads to a theoretical explanation. I think that uh, here, what you can do is to kind of discuss with previous research what what you have accomplished. Like if you fully support or if you fully reject, or if in the end you also have like, uh, le let's assume this to fully support or fully reject, you have a very strong result. In that case, I think what you are bringing is clarity to, to the literature. So try to discuss that in previous research, there was not clarity, or even if it was clarity in the context of what we are studying, it was, we were not totally sure if the same will happen. I told you a few examples when we had tutoring session, we can also meet again, but uh, for example, the connection between biospheric values and the global mindset. Maybe one would assume from the literature that biospheric values uh, imply that the individual will care for global aspects since uh, biospheric issues are usually globally connected. So then if you care for the bi biospheric issues, then you should also have a high global mindset because you care for global aspects. So that is what we will assume from the literature. Like this is biospheric values, this is global mindset, they seem to work together. But, and that is a problematization, maybe we are not sure about what happens in with in students in university in Sweden, because maybe, um, Maybe in Sweden, the, the biospheric problems that, that students see are so high level that maybe they are very unique from Sweden. Like maybe they are not even that relevant outside Sweden, or maybe in Sweden is where they should be studied. So maybe they, are, they do not want to discuss topics that are related to, I don't know, Africa or something, because in Sweden they have different types of problems that maybe are more advanced. So maybe that's how you problematize the first assumption, the assumption that if you have high biospheric values, you will have high global mindset because biospheric values is global and global mindset is global. You problematize that by saying true, but maybe in this context, that is not true because Sweden has like very advanced problems in terms of biospheric problems that maybe are not the same as global problems. So maybe there is this connection and then you test and then you did everything, the quant analysis, blah, blah, blah. And the conclusion is no, actually we have very strong uh, result that there is a relationship we fully support. So then your discussion should be that like, although this could happen, like there is evidence that the problems from Sweden are quite a high level, blah, blah. The evidence show that actually they are still connected. And then you need to kind of argue uh, what are the consequences of that? Like maybe, all the, the Swedish problems maybe are at a higher level, maybe still there is kind of a responsibility or maybe there is still maybe like a sense of like something to do to get involved in global issues. So you see, it's like you recover the problematization that you did earlier and then you present your finding and then you explain how that finding contributes to the development of what we had earlier. Now we know that it actually has a relationship. So what are the consequences of that? And why is that that happens? So that is the theorizing of uh, a quantitative uh, research problem that is uh, kind of based in the hypothesis testing. Then the second one, I think uh, it can be used on both the quant and the qualitative aspects, because now it is about the discovering of a new concept or a mechanism that might emerge from this study. And although in the quant part, maybe it's not really about discovering, maybe it is actually about discovering the relationship. Like maybe for example, there are no previous studies on uh, collect, uh, materialism and the global mindset. Maybe there is not a specific uh, 
a, a specific study that links this relationship. And that is probably part of your problematization. So maybe in your problematization, you mentioned in the literature review and introduction, you mentioned that there is not a specific article that discusses this relationship, but that uh, it seems that they are quite connected in a way, like materialistic people will care more for their own well-being, and maybe that is in this this sonance or, or or this connection with global mindset, and then maybe blah, 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 you build your argument, and then you say, like, there is a need to test if there is really an, an, a relationship, and if that relationship is negative, so you stated the hypothesis. So that is a pronunciation. And now you have results. I think the results for materialism are in uh, are is it partial reject? I don't remember, but I think it's not a full support or full reject. I think it's something in, in between, like either contradictory findings or contradictory conclusions, something like that. So then what's the consequence of that? So probably you identify that there is a relationship, but it requires further examination. That is probably what you found. Like you found like uh, when when you tested the model in a certain way, then you identify, I think you support it in a way, but then when you tested in another way, then you didn't find su enough to support. So then the conclusion of your findings is that maybe you, you have evidence that there is something in between, but you need to, more research to to build on that and why is that and what are the consequences of that that is what you write in your discussion so in you you see there there is where you discover kind of a new relationship that before didn't exist before it was not clear if it will exist or not and you problem problematize to uh, motivate the reader to read if that if that is that is important and then you actually provide with evidence that it exists but it's just that it will require more research to actually identify it clearly, but you identify there is something in there. So that is an example of this. And finally, the, the last strategy, I think maybe Brian gave you better examples and uh, better instructions about this, but uh, qualitatively is interesting that maybe you can have enough data, rich data with a lot of meaning where you can be able to kind of propose a uh, reconfiguration of what we know about this or what I have been saying all the time we probably understand a and b and its relationship so your independent variable dependent variable and its relationship but with qualitative data you can open that relationship and identify how things work so I guess that is something that you can also discuss in your discussion especially related to the qualitative part like in the literature review, maybe you presented a simple framework or a simple figure of how things should work. And now you actually come with a more complex proposition, a more complex uh, theoretical explanation of why there is this relationship or not, or, or whatever your findings are. So this could be also uh, uh, another type of contribution. But if you think about it, all the strategies that I gave you have the same formula. You present the original idea, like this is what we know, and or we don't know what your problematization. This is probably uh, the like the first part of the equation, what we know or what we don't know, and the research problem. And then you bring your findings. This is what we found. This is the evidence. And then you, what are the consequences of that? So, based on those findings, how can we advance from what we know with these findings into a new state of knowledge? So that is the discussion, and that happens usually in chapter five. So I think from now, uh, I think I can finish the lecture. It's quite a short lecture. I think uh, it will be good if we meet in the tutoring sessions, just to clarify the last part, this last part in the discussion. And then after that, you only have the conclusion, but I will explain in another video more details about the conclusion, but I, in my opinion, it's much easier to write the conclusion than the discussion. The discussion, again, it's overlap between previous research and your findings, and it's tricky and it takes time and it's an iterative process. Maybe you also need to come back to the, to the literature review or maybe to the introduction to reframe or rewrite a little bit, polish a little bit your research problem so that you strategically 
a state a research problem that you have an answer at the end like now you have the data now you have the results so maybe you can strategically kind of restate your research problem to provide to be coherent with your research problem your findings and your contribution so that's it for this uh for uh, for this final uh, lecture